Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lion Burger Construction and Berglund Center, where live entertainment lives in the Roanoke Valley. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Moreno. My guest today is Plenty of Grace and Grit. As a matter of fact, that's the name of her newest business venture. Waynette Anderson is the president of Dr. Pepper Park at the Bridges, an outdoor music and special event venue in Roanoke that seems to be adding more and more performers every year. And Waynette, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, but how old is Dr. Pepper Park now? This is our eighth season. It's the eighth season, okay, yes. okay. Take us back to uh, when you first thought of launching this venue. Before that, your sponsor hounds company had been doing things downtown in Elmwood yes. Park, whatever, but what put the notion in your head that, hey, I'm gonna find this place and put up a, you know, a shell, a band shell and throw some concerts together? Yeah, the um, uh, sponsor hounds, which I established 15 years ago, and that's, like crazy to even say that out loud, but uh, 15 years ago, I established Sponsor Hounds, and at that time, our, our business model was to produce events, festivals, trade shows, which were very popular back then, um, before the internet really took off with internet shopping, and so, uh, like theme train show, trade shows, and we would rent uh, various venues in and around town. Uh, we've done conferences in New Orleans, and you know, all over the place. So we were the producer of events and uh, really, you know, an, an event marketing uh, firm. And so uh, with that business model, we would produce events on behalf of other organizations. We would produce events on behalf of ourselves. We would also um, sell sponsorships for other events before we had a, a vast event portfolio to really, um, you know, talk to uh, corporate sponsors about. Um, so I acknowledged early on in order for um, my business model to be truly sustainable after adapting it multiple times, that we really need to uh, needed to have our own event venue so that we were not subject to the schedule of other event venues. Obviously, everyone has to program their venue um, as much as they possibly can. Um, and we wanted the, the continuity of, of having uh, a, a date uh, for Wing Fest, for instance, every single year or various events so that people knew what to expect and when to expect it. Um, in order to do that, we really need to build our own place. And so then I started searching for property and realized the complexity of opening up a live music venue and the zoning challenges and parking challenges and things of that nature. Um, so after about three different properties falling through, um, it's funny how just, you know, God has always really pointed me in the right direction where I needed to be. Um, after all of those things fell through, um, you know, I was talking with someone and they said, you really should go down and talk with the developers at the Bridges mm -hmm. property, um, you know, next to Renwick Memorial. Sure. and um, Ern Ewart really, and those people. Yeah. Yes, yes. And you should really go have a conversation with them. And so I did. Um, it took some convincing, but, um, but we luckily convinced them and then off we went. We opened in 2015. Because when you go into where the the Dr. Pepper Park is, <coughs> it's like a, an old industrial park or yes. machinery shop. And um, it, it, it's, some of it's sort of rustic looking, let's yes. say. It has its own character. Yes. The one building that was the old Roanoke trolley barn where the trolley cars used to come in for repair, that's mm -hmm. been totally remodeled and Carillion's in there now. Yes. But it's, um, you're right by the river. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a funky little spot. It is, we liked that it was um, very unique. Got its own uh, character. It has a lot of character, and we love the history of the site. Um, it was unique in that you know it's next to the next to the river, the Roanoke River. It's at the base of Mill Mountain. Um, what a benefit to just when the you know when it becomes nighttime and and the Mill Mountain Star lights up, you know, to be able to have that. It really takes people off guard. Like uh, our artists have been on stage and been. Oh, We've got a right. star. We didn't know that was right. there. And, you know, perhaps people are visiting from out of town. We have a lot of out of town guests that come to the concerts and uh, it's beautiful. And it's kind of tucked back in there where you're in the center, center of town and in, in the um, downtown district. Mm -hmm. um, but you do sort of feel like you're on vacation um, because there's, you know, everything kind of slows down. There's not a lot of hustle and bustle and, um, and people really enjoy that. Seems to have it's sort of a steampunk feel to it or something when you're around yeah. those buildings. On it. It's a great and, description. Right. And, you know, a lot of people will congregate in front of the stage, mm -hmm. sing along, especially with some of the tribute bands we'll talk about. And then other people will mill around, get an adult beverage and just mill around. Mm -hmm. um, 
really something unique for Roanoke. I'm just wondering, um, uh, when you got into it, how much, was there a lot of red tape? Did you have to abide by certain ordinances as far as noise limits, things like that? Did you have to work oh, through all that? Oh, sure, yeah, I and mean, there's, you know, it's been such a learning experience. I mean, I didn't know anything about building any, I never built a house, never even remodeled a house. Um, I didn't know all about all of these different uh, protocols and, and all the red tape. Everything took uh, exponentially longer than what I thought it should take because I don't have a lot of patience and I'm like well here's the idea let's do it um, so I mean something as simple as an electrical platform you know created a lot of challenges and um, something that people don't realize is like for the first two years Dr. Pepper Park ran completely on generator power really yes um, you didn't see it because it was back behind the stage um, so for the first two years um, every weekend I was hooking up one of those big generators, pull along generators and going and filling it back up with diesel fuel and then taking it back to the park. I mean, absolutely no free time at all um, just to keep the place running. Mm. Um, so there were a lot of challenges I didn't anticipate, um, but you know, it all came together and some things really worked out to our benefit that we hadn't even planned on. So. And you don't mind rolling your sleeves up and getting your hands dirty, huh? No, that's, I'm a hard worker, always have been. Yeah. <laughs> um, what did you learn? <coughs> Excuse me. What did you learn about launching a business maybe you can pass along to people uh, as far especially s an ambitious undertaking like that? Yeah, uh, whatever you think it's going to cost, multiply it times five. <laughs> really? That's, that's uh, one of the things, you know, there are so many um, things I just didn't realize um, that things were going to cost, you know, engineering cost and things of that nature um, really, you know, caught you off guard. So. Um, the most important thing is that when you set forth to do something like this, to surround yourself with the right people, to have a team that's just as invested in the future of the business as you are. Mm -hmm. um, and I just can't stress that enough because you can make the mistake of surrounding yourself with, with the wrong people and then things don't get off the ground as they should. I couldn't have done it without um, our hardworking team. I'm wondering, did you get any help from the Small Business Development Center or anybody like that? Did you seek any help out? Or? I didn't. You know, and I, I have to say I didn't even really fully understand all of those services were available. That's, I mean, that's shame on me. Um, it wasn't until really uh, COVID that um, I was introduced to several of those organizations with, with small business to help me, you know, navigate through some of the grant processes and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Um, so no, um, I, I didn't. Um, I just, this is what I want to do and just forged right. ahead. Yeah. I think the uh, SBDC has been more aggressive lately about getting the word out. And let's talk about COVID before we talk about some of the fun stuff. Do we have to? <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> what was it like the last, especially in 20, did, did you have any shows in 2020 at all? Yes, you did? yes, okay. we, were, we stayed open. But you, um, you, but you got started late, right? Yeah, we okay. got started late. I, I think we opened the beginning of June. Okay. Uh, of course, we followed all of the restrictions. We were over and above what was recommended as far as uh, you know protocols to make sure people were safe. And um, although it was a challenging time, there were so many good things that happened, and that's what I really like to focus on. Um, so through that, um, there were a lot of people um, in our community and outside of our community that were exposed to our venue that had never had the opportunity to make it down there mm -hmm. before. Um, but because everything else was closed and no one else was doing anything in our town and neighboring towns, um, it provided us with a great opportunity to uh, really, you know, provide a safe environment for people to space out, enjoy live music, and and have some sense of normalcy. For you know, I think that you know they're they're talking about it more and more in the news now about the mental health effects um, that the shutdown had on people. And so there were so many people, just complete strangers that would come up to me and just thank me. I got so many positive emails um, for providing a safe place for them to go listen to live music and to really, you know, keep music alive in the Roanoke Valley at a time where we didn't have any live music happening. Um, we also gained a lot of, sp of sponsorship support um, through different businesses that again, they hadn't had the opportunity to come to the venue before. And then when they did, they said, well, this is amazing what you all have created here. We want to support that. So um, those were just a few of the positives that happened, you know, during during that time. Um, it was definitely much more difficult to run the business. Um, you know, obviously not as lucrative as we would like because of the restrictions on the attendance and, and things of that nature, the increased cost for uh, PPE and, and things like that. But uh, but we got it done and and everybody's really happy. And you even had some 
performers that the acts pull out because if they didn't want to travel. Well, it's not that they <laughs> didn't want to. Um, that's kind of a, a misconception. People um, think, well, the artists don't want to tour. Or they're, you know, they're afraid of this or afraid of that. There wasn't anywhere else for them to play except Dr. Pepper Park. Right, so they couldn't string it together. Yeah, right. so you know, some in some instances we were able to feature. Um, we still featured a high level of entertainment, a lot of national acts. Um, some did keep their date. You know, a lot of um, a lot of acts that are on the East Coast, they didn't mind coming and do a, a one or two show run. Uh, but you know, for some of these large acts with the tractor trailer, I mean, to load up everybody and head on down the road it just is not cost effective for them unless they can do the complete tour i mean they can't they can't do one show and then go back home and so we, we understood that mm -hmm. um, again the positive to remember during that time is that um, every single artist did the right thing um, you know our our contracts contractual agreements don't protect against a pandemic right on either side <laughs> so they could have very well said you know what we want our money. We want 100% of our money and we're not playing because, you know, we're willing to play, but, you know, we can't. So, uh, but they didn't. Everybody did the right thing. They either rescheduled, moved the show, or or we, an agree we were in agreement to cancel the show if we couldn't find a mutually agreeable date. Mm -hmm. um, so, but everybody did the right thing and, and I think that's, that's the win for the industry, although it was one of the most strongly affected, um, you know, businesses. Uh, I think the win for the industry is that everyone truly worked together um, to make everything mutually beneficial in a, in a time where we just, you know, we didn't have a lot of options. Seems like everybody's out on the road in 2022 trying to make up for... Aren't they? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, you did some really cool things in 2020 early on, like you had drive up where people could get craft beer or something, drive up and yeah. get beer, and then you had music playing on stage and all that. So mm -hmm. uh, you really, Dr. Pepper Park was really in the mix there, trying to get people some sense of normal, normalcy. Yeah, well, we tried to identify like what was needed at the time, you know, in the community. And um, Growlers to Go was a, a great event. Um, it also gave the, gave us the opportunity to highlight um, the businesses that had sponsored us, effect, you know, expecting us to fully produce our season. And, you know, 2020 was going to be our breakout year, more national acts than we'd ever had before. We had so much sponsorship support from our local businesses. And, you know, we stopped and said, hey, this is not just affecting us. This is affecting every business right. around us and everybody. So we, we just systematically started calling all of the businesses and, you know, how can we help you? Like, what's your pain point? People can't come in your store. How can they do business with you? And so we really used what was a need in the community at that time, which was nobody could get craft beer, you know, because all of the local brewers were shut down. Um, nobody could gather. Um, so they could just drive through, they could pre-order. And uh, we use that as an opportunity to highlight the businesses that sponsor us by, um, you know, provided them with a really nice goodie bag that had um, items from the businesses that support us. And then, you know, how you could help those businesses as well. Um, plus, it helped the local breweries to, you know, get some beer out when, you know, they had it ready, but no way to sell it. So, uh, you know, it really was a, a good win and well supported. Once the breweries got open, we stopped doing it because it was mm -hmm. no longer a need. Yeah. Seems like it was about five years ago at this point. It just seems like a... Seems old, like a hundred years. It, it, <laughs> it really does. Um, yeah. You are actually president of a handful of companies, correct? Sponsor Hounds. River Rock uh, Entertainment. Which is what? What is River Rock? River Rock Entertainment. So Sponsor Hounds is the management entity for... Um, and oversees all of the activities for um, for Dr. Pepper Park and River Rock Entertainment actually is the the operator for the property Dr. Pepper Park as you can imagine there's different set of insurances right. and things that are specific to those businesses so River Rock Entertainment is the company that is Dr. Pepper Park um, and then um, GWA Properties is our, our property management company my husband and I own together um, and then I just um, launched my new business in public speaking uh, called Grace and Grit. Yeah so talk about Grace and Grit which you have plenty of that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Just talk about that you know what message are you relaying to people and who's it focus on? Well you know um, it's really interesting uh, I, I guess we all sort of have this bucket list in our head and, and for me, I try to focus on what I'm most insecure about so I can try to really overcome that. Um, I've got like a whole checklist. In fact, you insecure? Very insecure about some things. <laughs> so I don't like anything 
to, to get on top of me. So I used to be really afraid of TV. So I decided to do a TV show until I'd done it so much. I was no longer afraid to be on TV. Um, and public speaking has always been something I'm very, very afraid of. Um, it would surprise everyone to know that like I get very nervous before I go on stage just to introduce the bands. I would never have guessed because you seem like you're really into it. Yeah, I, I'm excited um, at the event and I'm excited for everybody, but it, for me to be in front of people singing, I have no problem. <laughs> for me to be in front of people talking, for whatever reason, I struggled with that. Um, so I just decided I was going to um, get a coach just for personal growth and talk to her about how I can become more comfortable for when I do press conferences and interviews and things of that nature. And so I, I secured a coach. And then through that development, um, I said, you know, this this seems like I could really dial it in and touch more people's lives. So a lot of people ask me questions like yourself, like how did you do it? What were your challenges? You know, and and I had been, unbeknownst to me, inspiring people. And so I thought, well, if this can be something that's that's inspirational um, to tell them how I did these things, mm -hmm. um, then, then that would be wonderful. So then I said, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak at four things. I'm gonna really target to get four speaking engagements. If I'm comfortable and it's well received, then I'll start the business. Um, and it was very well received. So I established um, and wrote three signature speeches, which all of these are on um, my website for public speaking, which is waynetanderson.com. Mm -hmm. um, and they are intended to reach a variety of audiences. So it really just depends on what the goals are for that particular speaking engagement. And then I can also write something custom as well. Um, so really, you know, one is more motivational and educational and, and, and the other two are about, you know, how to do this, you know, how to have plan A thinking without needing a backup plan, how to achieve your goals in the face of any adversity. I think I can speak very well on that <laughs> on that right. topic. Um, and then the other one really is just, you know, how to, you know, my five secrets for um, creating a landmark and a legacy. And, um, and that's really more of a speech that people that want to know more about the entertainment industry and about Dr. Pepper Park and how things work. Um, uh, I usually do those that speech for like rotary groups and things of that nature. Um, so it's been quite a journey and very exciting. And uh, I've got a, a virtual conference coming up. It'll be my first virtual speech that I've done. So I'll gain experience with that. Um, and then my next step to overcome my fears is to actually be in a play. So I know you can probably provide me with lots of guidance. Oh, yeah, that. yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm rehearsing for a play right now, as a matter of fact. That's awesome. Um, are any of your talks geared towards women? Spe specifically? You know, I, it seems that I'm being invited to a lot of women, you know, female groups, but that's not necessarily the case. Okay. Um, I've never really been like, hey, look at me, I'm a girl. Right. You know, I'm just like, look at me, I work hard and this is what the goals are. I'm, I'm just wondering though if you, and maybe you don't, do you think that women who want to start businesses or whatever are, are there any disadvantages or advantages of being a woman? Are there any obstacles or maybe that there's, there's not there maybe some women are just not familiar with a lot of the institutional things you need to do mm -hmm. i'm just wondering if you, you do you think there's any special challenges women entrepreneurs face i'm sure that some would tell you yes um based on my experience i've always seen being a woman as as a huge advantage Why? so just because most of the industries that i've worked in have been male dominant um and I've seen that as, well, look at me, I'm just a unicorn, like no one's like me. Right. So you walk into a room and everybody looks the same except you. That's, I don't know, I see that as a huge advantage. Um, and if they were brought up right, they want to treat you nice because you're, you're a lady or? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I've, I've, I've never had any trouble yeah. um, in that realm, but I've heard a lot of stories from women, you know, in speaking with these groups that have encountered challenges. Um, I just have to say that um, all of my male influences in my life, whether it was my father or any of my previous bosses, have always um, elevated me and lifted me up and encouraged me. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm a lover of men and, and women, and I think that women have a huge advantage. And, and once they acknowledge that, I just think things go a whole lot easier. <laughs> so, um, you know, women have the ability to multitask and, you know, do so many things, and, and so do men. Um, I just think working together, you know, is, is the key thing. If everybody's working towards the same goal, it doesn't matter 
you know, whether you have a skirt on or not. Right. I'm wondering, uh, working in, in I, the, the music world, it's still pretty male dominated. It is. So did you, when you got Dr. Doc, Dr. Pepper Parker off the ground, especially, did you have a cred credibility issue? They, you know, hey, I'm, I got this place in Roanoke, Virginia. I want to book it. Mm -hmm. Was there a credibility issue? Did you have to kind of earn your reputation? I think everybody does, regardless of whether you're a man or woman, you, you have to earn it. Um, you have to prove that you can do it. You have to prove that you can handle the production requirements and the hospitality elements and, um, you know, organization, pr yeah, all of the things. You, you have to prove all of those things regardless of who you are. Um, so I don't, I don't get hung up and focused on, well, they just don't like me because I'm a girl. Right. Um, you know, it, it, somebody might talk to me a certain way you know, because I'm a girl. Or, or they just weren't used to dealing with women. I don't yeah, I think, that, I think that the industry is definitely changing. It's changing. When I go to entertainment conferences, you know, there's a, a large female presence. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think that the industry has identified that, you know, it, it takes all kinds of people to, you know, it takes a village, as they say, to, yeah. to put on a concert. And, you know, the organi organizational skills that... Um, that I possess, you know, or have been, you know, beneficial. But, um, you know, again, I don't, I don't think that me being a female has had any disadvantages whatsoever. So let's talk about a little bit what's going on this year. It, it seemed like at first, Waynette, Waynette that uh, Dr. Pepper Park leaned m much more heavily on tribute bands. But this season, for example, you've got a lot of national acts booked, uh, lots of country, some hard rock bands. Um, mm -hmm. um, is that just a matter of momentum and gaining reputation and people wanting to put Dr. Pepper Park on their schedule? You know, uh, what it comes down to is really addressing the needs of our community. It's not about what I want to do um, or how I want to do it. It's, it's identifying the need in the community, really listening to what people will and want to support. Um, so that's really what we base our re reputation on. Mm -hmm. You know, initially, yeah, do we want to bring in Garth Brooks and Kenny Chesney? Of course we do, <laughs> but we don't. We don't have the space for that. We don't have the capacity. That's not going. That's not going to happen. That's not realistic. Um, you know, obviously we're privately owned and operated, so you know we're not subsidized uh, by any type of, of government funding in any way. Um, so if I fail, that's my money. So we had to figure out a way to really build the business. Um, and, and make it successful without assuming a lot of risk. As you can imagine, these national acts are so expensive. The artist fee plus the production and the staffing, it's extremely expensive. So you make one bad decision, you know, that could be your house payment, right? Yeah. So you have to be very careful. So I just sat back and I thought, how can we um, really grow Dr. Pepper Park and establish it in the community you know, without losing our shirts. So we started off, we produced a number of festivals, food festivals, because they were less expensive. We could really activate a lot of local talent with that. Um, Wing and Fest is back this year. Wing Fest is, of course, the most expensive, the, the most expensive, it is the most expensive, but it is uh, the most successful event that we do each year. It's Roanoke's largest uh, one-day food festival, and so it's in its 13th year. I'm very, very proud of that. Um, so we, you know, did a lot of festivals, and then we thought, you know, how can we deliver the artist experience that our community's telling us they want to hear you know we can't uh you know book these national acts so then i really um started looking at tribute acts and of course they're not cover bands they're tribute artists that look like them sound like them act right. like them i mean some of them are amazing just amazing and of course they're emulating the artist at the height of their career so you're getting to see you know fleetwood mac at their best not real Fleetwood Mac, you know, at the end of their career, which are, they're great too, obviously, but um, of course at a fraction of, of the price. I mean, our ticket prices are anywhere from, you know, 18 to, to $40, you mm -hmm. know, for these acts. So once we um, were able to really build, um, build that momentum and Flashback Fridays is still our most successful series, we were able to layer in some of the national acts as well. And now we have more than we've ever had before. Right, we've only got a couple minutes left, but I wanted to just run down. Uh, Absolute Queen, Rumors LA, the Fleetwood Mac tribute, a Bee Gees tribute band. I want to see that. Yeah. Kiss America. I've seen you in your Kiss get up. Yeah. That one. A face to face with Billy Joe and Elton John tribute, like they toured together. Uh -huh. And then some of the, the national acts Outlaws, Blues Travels, Andy Grammer, and a big one, the Indigo Girls mm -hmm. in late August. Yes. We'll talk about getting them on board. Yeah, that's, uh, that's been a labor of love. I've had so many offers in for the Indigo Girls. I absolutely love them. Um, so 
that concert's actually on a Wednesday night. So we had to do it on a Wednesday night instead of a weekend, but we don't care. You'll and get people uh, out for that. yes, tickets are selling like crazy. Everybody's really excited about the season. So um, mm -hmm. we have um, about 25. 25, we're on track to, uh, to have about 30 concerts this year. Um, so it's a, it's a very heavy schedule. So we're praying for great weather and a lot of support. Real quick, less than a minute left. What, what, what drives you win it? You know, it's the rush. I just, lo I, love, I'm, I just love the adrenaline of doing something new. And um, when I'm standing backstage for that five minutes, I take five minutes every show and I look out at the crowd and I see everybody smiling and dancing and forgetting whatever happened in their day, whatever's going on in their lives. Just a little escape from reality for a little while to know that we can provide that uh, to people in our community. That That is what keeps me going, that five minutes each show. Wayne Ed Anderson, always great to see you. We're going to have to leave it there, but thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm Gene Morano. This is Business Matters, and thank you for joining us.